Don't hear our trans. Get ahead early. 14 points in the first half, Charlie, or that haunting feeling of John Elway coming back in the fourth quarter. He almost did it to the Raiders last week. Elway, why the magic of Elway? What does he have? Well, he's spontaneous. He can move outside, throw the ball, surprise the opposition. He's done it over and over. Everybody has confidence in him. Kansas City's haunted by it, so they're going to have to get a lead and just hold him off. Marty Schottenheimer, though, does have a problem with Dan Reeves, the two head coaches. He is 0-6 against Reeves. I know, and they're agonizing 0-6 because he had so many games won, celebrating on the sideline only to have Elway pull it out in the last seconds, week after week, game after game. Is it possible for a coach to make that much difference? Well, I think it will if you have an Elway or a Montana. Then you can really brag about it. However, we must say, though, that your record against Reeves is 0-3. You weren't supposed to stay that. You promised me. 0-3, you're sure right there. Dan has done a great job with Pat Bowlin. Did you uh, notice how, how his eyes lit up when we talked to him about that? Yes, he said, oh, now I know what yeah, you're talking knew, about. He, he, knew. Knew. he knew how much it meant to me that last time we played, he won in overtime. And here is Steve DeBerg, the quarterback of the Kansas City Chiefs. And the year that he is having, in reality, parallels the year that the Chiefs are having. Uh, this guy is having his best season, but above and beyond that, he's playing great football. Poise, command, he runs the game beautifully. He has good, solid knowledge of the line blocking. But last week, they broke out. They hit the deep ball, and that's what they needed all week. In his career, one interception every 21 attempts as prior to this year, 1990. One interception every 110 attempts. He's been intercepted only three times. That was in one ball game against Indianapolis, and that's been it. Todd McNair, James Saxon are deep for Kansas City. Treadwell kicks it away, and Saxon takes it at the four. And here we uh -oh. and Kansas City falls on it. That could have been disaster early. And Denver needed a break like that. They got the fumble, but they couldn't hold on to it. Frank Winters recovered the fumble for Kansas City. Kansas City's offense. Their offensive line, particularly good in pass protection, as DeBerg has been sacked only four times in the last four games. Backs and receivers. Christian Okoye draws the starting assignment at running back, but also look for Barry Word in that slot. When Kansas City goes to four wide, the two running backs and the tight end will come out. McNair, Harry, and big play artist J.J. Burden come in. And Kansas City comes out throwing all the time in the world right over the middle. Surprise, Christian Okoye, not known for the great hand. Stephon Page was the primary receiver. DeBerg has so much poise. He looked outside. Okoye is the fourth alternate, I'm sure, and he just dropped him a little pass. Denver's defense, their defensive front seven. Notice Fletcher is at right outside linebacker, Lucas left side. Mecklenburg is back inside. Their secondary, it has been torn apart by injuries. The Broncos have had four different starters at left corner. And this time, Okoye in the role that you expect. And he's going to pick up a couple of yards to the 22 where Ron Holmes of the Broncos is there to greet him. Okoye tried to break back behind his blocking, something Barry Word's been doing all year when he's entered the game. And the, the criticism of Okoye is he's just followed directly his blocking. Watch him bend back behind everybody. If he could have only moved about three more steps, he'd have had an opening. But this he must develop, or a Word will be the running back. Chiefs at their own 22-yard line opening drive, third down and four. Shotgun deep over the middle, passes complete 36 yard line. Abiel Harry has it, and Wyman Henderson there for the Broncos, a gain of 13. First down, third down conversion. Wyman Henderson can stay close to a receiver, but he has a very difficult time making a play on the ball. This is a good example. Harry runs a deep in pattern. Henderson's in good position, but not to make the play. Beautiful throw, great catch, but the defender just isn't able to close on a receiver when the ball's in the air. And this is Henderson's problem. You'll see a lot of action, Wyman. 36-yard line, first down. Pass 
pass is complete to Stefan Page, and Dennis Smith makes the tackle. A gain of 15, back-to-back -back first downs. DeBerg wanted to throw a slant to Page, but the defense changed, and you'll see uh, Robbins come up, and at that point, Page changes his pattern and splits the defender. So a beautiful job by DeBerg reading the coverage and Page adjusting. And this is where the real improvement of the Chiefs has occurred, this phase of the football game. First down, Denver 49-yard line. McCoy, uh -oh. flea flicker. to the Broncos told us yesterday that DeBerg even smiles after you've sacked him. But look at this reaction <laughs> after he throws the touchdown pass. Well, he can see a great season coming up with him running the ball club. It's a beautifully executed play. Beautifully executed. 84 yards, five plays, just over three minutes, 49-yard pass. And DeBerg debunking the fact that he is a short play control quarterback. He has been going deep this year. Ezor and Montgomery are deep. And Montgomery takes it at the 9. To the 20, the 25. Breaks it to the outside. Slips the tackle. A great return. Two flags drop back at the 20 and the 25. Let's go back to the touchdown. A beautiful job of faking. First watch both safeties reaction to a Corrier taking that ball. And when you see that, then you'll realize that a Coye has fooled everybody. Now he'll take the ball inside, pitch it back. Now watch both safeties totally fooled, and that leaves Page wide open down the middle. And, and when those safeties start running forward, that receiver breaking behind him, it's over. A beautifully thrown ball, too, Charlie, because he put nice soft touch on it. He wasn't going to miss it. Holding on Denver on the kick return, nullifying that 33-yard return. They have a first down at their own 12-yard line. Their opening drive. And Bobby Humphrey gets the call. He'll pick up three Denver's offense. Their offensive line will feature the Wydell brothers at the guard slots. Denver's main concern is to keep Kansas City's linebacker Derek Thomas out of Elway's face. Backs and receivers, the return of Mark Jackson, Vance Johnson, a wide receiver, Bobby Humphrey going for 1,000 yards. When Denver goes to four wide receivers, both running backs and the tight end will come out. Steve Sewell is back. He'll join Ricky Natillo and Michael Young. Second and eight. throw. Pass is complete. First down just outside the 26-yard line to the tight end. Ferris K. Albert Lewis makes the tackle. A gain of 12 in the first down. Kansas City's defense, their defensive front seven, strengthened by the return of pass rusher extraordinaire, number 58, Derek Thomas. Chief secondary features perhaps the finest tandem of cornerbacks in the NFL. Number 29, Albert Lewis. Number 31, Kevin Ross. Much of this game is dependent on Daryl Hamilton somehow handling Derek Thomas on the left side. And here's Humphrey. Two, maybe three yards on the right side. Albert Lewis moves up from the cornerback. Let's check the 10-minute ticker, and we have some surprises waiting for you. 
Buffalo big over Indianapolis. Houston wallops Cleveland. San Francisco in overtime defeats Cincinnati. Pittsburgh over New England as expected. And the Giants defeat Minnesota. And that was closer than that final score. Seattle over Green Bay. And Phoenix downs Atlanta. You know, Charlie, rarely do you talk to a coach, in this case Dan Reeves, about a game plan and him relating it to Daryl Hamilton, his left tackle, and how he'll block Derek Thomas. Elway goes deep, and he is too tall. We've got double flags. Vance Johnson, the intended receiver. Albert Lewis moved up on the coverage. Ron Cherry, the safety, had dropped over. Pass interference, number 29 defense, automatic first down. Well, Denver's going to have to get a lot of breaks. This ball was thrown about four feet over the receiver's head, but the official calling it felt it was a catchable ball. Now, you see a nice break. Now, you watch Lewis close on it, but it's way up over the top, at least two feet over everybody's head. It's an interpretation, Charlie, just an interpretation. Nice play fake. Higher than anybody could ever jump to catch it. First down at the 40, Humphrey right side, and he will go to the 45. A gain of five, it'll be second down and five. Denver's going to want to establish a running game. You hear that week after week by every coach. But they feel, why, do you, why do you say that? Why do well, coaches say that? It, it's, it's conservative. They think they're playing rock hard, fundamental football. They don't want early mistakes. They want to get field position. But in this case, Daryl Hamilton, as a pass protector, makes it tough for Dan Reeves to call a pass. He's so concerned about Derek Thomas, number 58. Second and five. Thomas is down, uh, getting up a little bit slowly, or maybe just waiting for everybody else. Humphrey with a little over a yard. You see him coming down well to the inside and cutting the entire play down. Kerry Porter really couldn't make a block on him. He got underneath him so quickly. This guy is a force, and he beats his man early. So Dan Reeves, in talking about his passing game, wants to have a back ready in case Derek Thomas beats Hamilton real quick. They'll have a back there. Third and three. Elway with time. Now he scrambles. And he is dropped at the 45. Neil Smith, what an improved football player he is. Marty Schottenheimer says this guy is ascending rapidly into greatness as a football player. He'll come from the left side of the screen, coming off a block right there, and cutting Elway off where he had to go inside. But Neil Smith is one of those veteran players that's come of age under Marty Schottenheimer. Mike Harandica. He is third in the NFL. J.J. Burden, fair catch, scoops it in at the 17-yard line. We've got a timeout. The Chiefs have the lead, seven to nothing. NBC Sports coverage of the National Football League is brought to you by Mitsubishi, bringing you a full line of award-winning automobiles. Mitsubishi, the word is getting around. By Coors Light, the one that won't slow you down. The silver bullet is the right beer now. By USF&G Insurance, protecting your business, home, auto, and life. USF&G, standing behind the USA. And by Xerox, the document company. This is Charlie Jones, Bill Walsh with the football heads. Gee, look at that. <laughs> They're ready. Kansas City with a 7-0 lead. Opening, lead, opening drive, 49-yard touchdown pass to Berg to Page. And a first down for the Chiefs at their 18 yard line. And Okoye off of the left side. And he will go to the 21, a gain of three. So it'll be second down and seven. Mecklenburg making the tackle. The 1990 quarterback rankings. And look how DeBerg ranks with other leading quarterbacks, all of whom he saw in passing through the uh, 49ers, Tampa Bay, and Denver. So many of well, them. Most of them. Uh, look at Joe Montana. Of course, Joe's having a great year. But any number of people, John Elway, certainly, test averted. So this really points out that Steve's having a great year among the very best in football in 1990. 
Take it down to Koye, and he rolls close to the first down. He needed seven. He may have gotten it. Again, it is Carl Mecklenburg, who has moved back inside at linebacker. Says he likes it a lot better there. There's more oh, it, action. It's much better. The entire team agrees with it. Mecklenburg's at home. But that time, Steve Atwater came up and made a shot late to really cut it off. Mecklenburg moving laterally. Gets part of it. Watch Atwater right up underneath everything. And uh, Atwater having a great year. He personally, along with Mecklenburg, but primarily Atwater, stopped Okoye in that first game. And let's just see if they can do it again. That must hurt. Getting underneath that 260 pounds, hammering right down the middle on you. Oh. And as you saw, just short of the first down. It'll be third down, four or five inches to go. Chiefs are really a fully dimensional team now. Every situation uh, that can come up in the ball game, they seem better prepared for at this point. And notice number 61, the rookie taken in the second round of the draft, Tim Grunhard, with that bad thumb, it's in a cast, is in at center. Webster was the starter. And we have movement in the offensive line. Looks like Bregan. Encroachment, number 71, defense, five yard, first and ten. Reagan came across, came across and made contact, so it'll be a first down. There's this, this is the cast on the, uh, basically for the thumb of Tim Grunhard, and the date on it is 10 27 90, and that is the day that his father Charles passed away. And he is dedicating not only this game, but the rest of the season to him. And when he came back, the next game, Mike Webb from the place and gave him the game ball. And here's Akoya over the left side. Every time Akoya gets that ball, Steve DeBerg is faking beautifully the other way. And of course, we know that as the game progresses, he'll come out of there with the ball after an excellent fake to Akoya and try to make a big play out of it. So they've got Akoya going one way, taking the ball, and DeBerg faking the other way. And so far this year, most teams haven't fathomed that very well. Sooner or later, DeBerg keeps the ball and comes up with a play. Second down and eight. Incomplete. Now that was tight. Now that's not where to throw it on Wyman Henderson. That he can do. He reads the quarterback very well. DeBerg took three quick steps, but look at Henderson on the right of the screen. That ball starts, and he starts. So he's there as quickly as Rob Thomas was trying to make the reception. That's one thing Henderson will do. He'll jump on the quarterback throwing the ball. What you need to do with Wyman, I hate to pick on him, but get him running because he doesn't have closing speed. Third and eight at the 35. Kansas City leading seven and nothing. Pass is complete right at the 40-yard line to Todd McNair, but he is dropped immediately by Steve Atwater, and Kansas City will be about three, between two and three yards shy of the first down, so Brian Barker will come in to kick it away. Atwater's tackling ability really makes a difference because when he hits a guy, he stops it. And that time, as a nickel linebacker, his job was to cover McNair, and he just timed his tackle to stop McNair from running for that extra two yards. Kevin Atwater, really a factor for Denver, and he's one of the people still playing very, very well. Vance Johnson is the return man. He has the fair catch at the 25-yard line. He is returning in place of Kevin Clark, who is inactive because of an ankle and a knee injury. 34 yards on the kick, and we've got a flag dropped back at the 45-yard line. Kansas City crowd very quiet. Penalty against Broncos. I am... I'm not sure they're used to being in this position. <laughs> and so they don't know how to react, but they're, they're, they're leading 7-0 over a hated rival, and they're just kind of staring Maybe and watching. they're waiting for the fourth quarter. <laughs> I don't know, but uh, they're, they're favorites. During the kick, number 22 receiving team. 10-yard penalty, first and 10. They're favorites, and I'm not sure they're used to a typical winning ball game. We'll be back in just a moment. 56 time remaining first quarter offensive line of the Denver Broncos Kendall near the right tackle 
a 10 year veteran look as if at his experience in games and starts against the rest of that offensive line. You know the problem with the rest of that offensive line may be they may not have the talent either. Aside from the experience there may not be great talent there and I'm sure that has Dan Reese concern. Now way to throw. Bailing 7 nothing. High incomplete. Mark Jackson, the intended receiver. Albert, Lewis. are they picking on Albert Lewis? Well, you they don't go to that side. <laughs> it's to the right. Maybe it's easier to go over there, but no one can pick on Albert Lewis or Kevin Ross, but especially Lewis. That time, uh, Dino Hackett was right in the position in his zone where he belonged in this team lineup and, and made a play on the ball. So the zone defense of the Chiefs is making it tough on Elwood. That time, uh, John Tuchbalt late, and so everybody knew where it was going. Bobby Humphrey, the remaining back, in his second and ten. Pass complete to Johnson, and he goes down immediately. Lost his balance at about the 17. Number 58 was coming up the field, and he is blazing fast. And you'll see Hamilton push him by, and this is the game plan that's so darn important. Mike Shanahan talking with him, the quarterback coach, before the game. They want Elway to get the ball off and get it off quickly. Never a deep drop, because that just allows Thomas to beat Hamilton. That time, Hamilton was in between the quarterback and the pass rusher, so Thomas couldn't get there. Third down and eight at the 17. Now the crowd getting into the game. Hamilton, is Hamilton down. moved, Charlie. Darrell Hamilton, the left tackle. Pass 69 offense. It's, under, it's understandable. Uh, bless his heart, he's got to come out of there and pick up the fastest pass rusher in the league today. And he's not a real quick man and certainly not a highly skilled guy either. When we talked with Dan Reeves yesterday, he said his concern, the speed rusher. Yep. The speed rusher against a slower, younger player. Uh, Hamilton is 6'5", 300, but he's after, he's just uh, Sugar Ray Leonard he's in there with. He's yeah. so quick. Yeah, it hits him, he's gone. Third and 15, Thomas now on the other side. Elway has the protection, he goes deep. Pass is complete. And he goes to Shannon Sharp. Sharp will be a wide receiver and a tight end. And Elway. that is only his fourth reception of the year. Right, Elway waited for the zone defense to clear. Then he threw it right up along the sidelines to Sharp. But Sharp's courage really shows up here. He knows he's going to hit. He's got Duran Cherry right down his throat, and he held on to the ball. He clears to the outside against Ross. There's a hole in the defense. Here comes Cherry exploding into it. Cherry got up a little slower. He's not even up. We have a timeout. The Chiefs lead it seven to nothing. When we talked with Deron Cherry yesterday, he said we are a much more physical team. Well, you saw the physical hit, but he was the one who ended up being stunned. Yeah, you know, he just gave it everything he had and uh, probably twisted his neck. He's a fascinating guy. He's as bright a football player as I've ever met. And we can talk about that as the game progresses. Jeff Donaldson has replaced him. He really has this D Denver team and everybody fully scouted. Elway, a play action fake. It is bobbled and incomplete. Shannon Sharp, the man who just caught the 27-yard pass down the sideline, converting a third and 13. Could not pull this one in. Elway's throwing late, and part of it's because he's getting a pass rush that's giving him some problem. But you see how open Sharp is. Now, just catch the ball. He wants to run with it, obviously, before he's got it. And you just can't do that. You need that possession pass. That 8 to 10 yard gain, whenever it's there, you have to get it done. And Percy Snow of the Chiefs is shaken up on the play and a 10 yard penalty against the Broncos. Dan is concerned. That is so tough to be with three wins. Then things start going against you. The breaks of the game start going against you.
Well, they're examining Percy Snow. Let's uh, check the 10 minute ticker. Buffalo stays in the hunt, of course, for the Super Bowl berth. Big game next Saturday against the Giants. Houston, that's the, that's the largest, uh, most points they've ever scored. And a rundown of all the others. These, of course, are the games earlier with Pittsburgh winning. The Giants came from behind with 13 unanswered points to win their ball game. That will be as close, Charlie, as you can get to a preview of a Super Bowl is Buffalo and the Giants. The Giants may not be the best team in the NFC, but they're one of the big, physical, strong teams. They could very well be a champion, and Buffalo may be the best in the NFC. So they'll play, and we'll have a good look at comparing the two conference best teams, or the best, the highest echelon. Of play. And one of, the, one of the interesting points of that game, I think, from Buffalo's standpoint, is they will have an opportunity to play one of the top NFC teams in the NFC stadium, and should they get to the Super Bowl, then it won't be, the, the mystique will not be there that you have if you don't have that experience. Well, Buffalo was able to, to hold out and, and beat Philadelphia a week ago. Now, if they can do the same thing with the Giants, that's, that's got to mean they can stand up to the 49ers, the Giants, or anyone else in the Super Bowl. So that'll be a great game. And again today, they both won today. Buffalo over Indianapolis. And the Giants, 23 to 50. And NFL Live. Big interview with Bill Parcells. O.J. Simpson is going to talk to him. Is he going to stay in New York? Is he going to move? Is he in the, the many rumors that uh, that other coaches and former coaches are involved in? Well, a bit, a, Tampa Bay is a big job because they're going to do whatever it takes to win. They've made up their mind. So Par Parcells, among others, is a logical uh, candidate. I just think Bill has too much affection for New York to the first team to leave it and go somewhere else. Now way to Bobby Humphrey. Dumps it right over the middle. He'll get 11 yards as he goes to the 40-yard line. So it'll be second down and nine as he got the penalty plus one back. Kevin Ross with the tackle. Denver, by the way, already has been penalized five times for 40 yards. The Chiefs once for 13. Humphrey is having a good year. Not quite what last year's was, but a good year. And another Kansas City player is down. That's Kevin Ross. They can't afford to lose these guys for very long. Hackett doesn't make the tackle. Beautiful job of running. Kevin Ross making the tackle, and does he get that leg bent back? It must be. They can't afford to lose someone like this for any period of time because the cornerbacks are the very basis of the game in a championship uh, contest because one or two plays will win or lose it. It didn't look like it was hit and turn that badly. And there's Deron Cherry, who was shaken up a moment ago. He'll be back. That's the report that we have. There's the stop. Kevin Ross. Very difficult to see. Yeah. Well, then the Chiefs see it. See it. On his right leg, one of the, uh, I think one of his teammates came over the top and bent it back. Well, he's moving, so. But Deron Cherry, his knowledge of the opposition. It's I, awesome, isn't it? He mesmerizes me. He talks about every tendency by formation, by down and distance, and what a guy to have on your team. He is just, uh, I guess you could say, a brilliant mind playing defense. You'd like to think he'd be a coach, but he may have bigger and better things in mind. Meanwhile, he wants a really job, Charlie. <laughs> Side pass is complete to Clarence K. And he's going to pick up maybe a yard, and that's going to be off. One of the real underestimated players on the Chiefs team is Chris Martin, who was in the coverage that time from a linebacker spot. When the Chiefs go to a nickel, Derek Thomas moves to defensive end. The two inside linebackers come out. Stan Petrie replaces one of them. Then in the secondary, J.C. Pearson comes in at corner. Lloyd Burris is a strong safety, but most of the time he'll function more like an additional linebacker. Third down. Look out, Thomas. And Derek Thomas has his first sack in the last four games. He has his 16th on the year. Just pure speed and quickness. And Elway out of the shotgun is much more vulnerable to Thomas because he knows where the ball's going. And that, when that ball is snapped back, Thomas has a target to go for. So in this case, 
Hamilton just can't stay with him. Finally grabs him and holds on, and he still doesn't get the job done. J.J. Burton at the 19 to the 25. Great move at the 26-yard line, out to the 35, the 40, the 42-yard line. Now the crowd's into it, Charlie. Thomas exploding up the field, pure speed. Now you'll see Hamilton try to hold him, but if Elway takes the ball in the shotgun, Thomas knows just where to rush. That's why in this case, I think taking the ball from a snap from center is better. Then Thomas doesn't know exactly where to go. This is updated today, the NFL sack leaders. That, by the way, for Kansas City, second of the ball game, 50th of the year. They lead the NFL, and it ties a team record. 23 yards on the return. And now Barry Word is in at running back for Kansas City, and he has four to the 45. You know, in a sense, a Barry Word situation is an advantage to him. McCoya sort of softens them up. And then, and Word sees where he's running, where the holes are. Coach is talking to him. So when he takes the field, he's got a darn good idea where to take the ball. And he has been awesome the last three games. 254 yards. Well, he runs with power and speed. Second and six. 54 seconds left, first period. And Word to this side may have the first down. That's where Word is the toughest, where he starts up inside and bends to the outside. And that play was by design. They pull their guard, they, they slipped outside, and you notice a five-yard gain on just a routine play. And that's what this guy's been doing, 5.8, that tells us. Randy Robbins with the tackle. And they'll bring the chains across for the measurement. Word has gotten better every week. Just meeting him personally, the conviction he has, the confidence he has uh, in dealing with the press, the public, the coaches, everybody. And it's been documented, the problems that he had in the past, the problems that he had in New Orleans. And uh, Carl Peterson told us that when he signed the contract, they put some clauses in and said, we're going to check you. So that may be dehumanizing. And he said, word looked at him and said, <laughs> he said, when they slam that jail door, that is dehumanizing. So he's had the lowest of lowest experiences. And now in the highest of the highs, and, and the whole ball club is so pleased for him. I think he's going to make it and make it big. He is the, really the prototype of the Jim Brown kind of a running back. He's big, and he's fast, and he's nimble. You combine the three. Okoye back in on the short yardage. As you saw, third down, less than a yard. Jumping on the right side, balding or win. The offensive tackle for Kansas City. Well, now we'll get that. Fourth point, 77 offense. Five yards, still third down. Now we'll get that uh, four wide receiver set with McNair. And McNair is such a big factor now, number 48, because he's combination pass receiver and pass protection blocker. And if Denver could get Humphrey to do what McNair does in the sense of being part of their passing game, I think Humphrey would be a much more dimensional player. But right now, McNair is a, is a very, very fine third down back. Got down to the end of the first quarter. And the cut sounds exactly with the snap. That is the end of the first quarter. Chiefs lead it seven to nothing. When we talked with Steve DeBerg yesterday, Bill, he, he was going through all of the coaches, including yourself, that he has played for and all of the offensive schemes. Well, there's uh, got to be some knowledge there. There are a few coaches that uh, have seen their last days on the field, but look at that thing. Uh, number four, Bill Walsh, he broke an NFL record with us for completions. And so Steve has had an excellent background, and it's so great to see him overcome all of us coaches <laughs> and become one of the best quarterbacks in football. Also, he said he is putting together, he's got all the playbooks, everything collected, he's going to put together the ultimate offensive place. I'd try to steal it from him if I could. <laughs> and he throws in his tipped incomplete. Good defensive coverage by Alton Montgomery. If he comes up with that book, it may be the best thing that, uh, that football has seen because he has been in some great systems. Tom Landry, certainly Schottenheimer, and uh, I think ours was pretty good at San Francisco. Uh, Steve is 
probably the best in football in his knowledge of the game and his application of it on the field. And, and he said the key, I'm going to keep it simple. He's going to keep it simple. That eliminated the 49ers. <laughs> <laughs> Here's Barker with the kick. Vance Johnson is the return man. He takes it at the 12. And he'll step out with about a four-yard return. Next Sunday here on NFL, we start it all with NFL Live at 12.30 Eastern time. And then look at the lineup. Houston, Kansas City. Oilers winning big today. Big game here. Indianapolis and the Jets. Indianapolis uh, still with some hopes. Jets are struggling. Seattle, Miami. There's another good matchup. Four o'clock game. Cincinnati losing in overtime today to the 49ers. Raiders play tomorrow night. San Diego at Denver. The standings in the AFC Central now with Cincinnati and Houston and Pittsburgh in that three-way log jam at 7 sir. I think the... Uh AFC is really coming on late in the year. A lot of teams are showing up and showing up very strong. The Bengals today, Houston, any number of teams. Bobby Humphrey from the 17 to the 20. He has three. It'll be second down and seven. Here we have an injury report on Percy Snow of the Chiefs. Uh, knee bruise will return on Kevin Ross of the Chiefs. Knee injury status is undetermined. Bobby Humphrey, the only running back to gain more than 100 yards against Kansas City this year. He has 13 today in five carries. And he's running, uh, Charlie, he's running behind just a fair offensive line at this point, so a lot of it he has to get himself. And here is Humphrey. Defense screens him out. great support move but Percy Snow finished that play off now that uh, Denver's going to pitch the ball to the outside and everybody starts going for it and Denver's hoping they're pulling linemen get out there but they're all cut off now watch this and watch that hit by Snow all the way to the outside now this is why they drafted Snow he is a menacing hitter and it's taken him longer than some other guys to really fit in because he had a different style of defense at Michigan State Kevin Ross back in the game. He has man coverage on the field. Third sack for the team. Chris Martin gets this one. Well, Elway is determined not to make a mistake that'll destroy their chances to win the game. He started to run three times now, and they really haven't been sacks because he started running to avoid throwing the interception. So, uh, very good defense, but Elway, on the other hand, is using real good instincts here. He doesn't want to take a chance with that interception. Unless Kansas City gets in the end zone quick, then the longer it goes with just a seven-point lead, the better chance Elway has to come back. Mike Coran to kick. J.J. Burden is the return man. The Bird said Burden is a game-breaker. He takes it at the 45. He's to the 50 and he's out of bounds. It's a nice return, but he doesn't break any games on that one. We've got a timeout. We'll be back in a moment. Kansas City leads 7 another. Albert Lewis is grimacing. He caught a leg whip and came out limping just a bit. It looks like his leg just gets right there. Hit, like a bruise on the thigh or something of that nature. The Chiefs are getting beat up. They are. It's a physical game. Denver never lets up. You know that. First down, Kansas City. Denver 46-yard line. Kansas City leading seven. A little slow on the exchange and a fumble. And Denver has the ball. Cragen falls on it. Looked like the bird pulled away from the center before he had the ball. And then everybody sort of panicked trying to find it. But Denver needs these kind of breaks. That's why the dominant team, the playoff team, has got to get in that end zone or get points on the board. These are the kind of things that let somebody come back and upset them. Kansas City best in the NFL in turnovers, plus 22. And the exchange was just never made. And, and Ward had taken his, his eye off the ball and was looking up the field. So Denver at their own 48-yard line, first down, 52 yards away from the end zone. Trailing 7 nothing, And Elway throws, and he is on target far side to Mark Jackson. That is
is the first fumble recovery in the last six plus games for the Denver Broncos. Their opponents had fumbled nine times, that being the tenth of the nine previous ones. They were not able to recover anyone. So maybe that the tide is beginning to turn for the Broncos. Well, I could. that was a well-executed play, the last one. Elway faked well and timed his out pattern. And De Denver, there's Wade, of course, who had a brutal time, if you remember, against Detroit. But on the other hand, is a uh, real solid, fundamental coach. He's done, done a very, very good job there. First down at the Kansas City 42. Here's Bobby Humphrey. And he just angles for the sideline. And then there's a flag. And now another flag. Some pushing and shoving. I'm sure some jawing is going on. Kevin Porter had a chance to make a big stop, and he missed the tackle. Humphrey is so nimble, just stepped right over the top of it. 12.09 is the time remaining in the first half. Kansas City leading seven, I think, opening drive, 84 yards in five plays. DeBerg to Stephon Page, 49 yards for the touchdown. And for Stephon Page, that, has, that extended his uh, modest streak to 77 games, consecutive games with a reception. Holding number 80 on the offense. One sportsmanlike conduct, number 57 defense. The penalties nullify each other. Repeat first down. Chris Martin of Kansas City, Mark Jackson of Denver. And a reason that I say that it's a modest streak, of course, Steve Largent uh, has the NFL record of 177, so he's quite a ways away. And we'll go back with the ball at the Kansas City 42-yard line in a first down. This uh, Bill Cower, the defensive coordinator, standing next to our left of uh, Marty, and he's done an excellent job. A young, very, very bright coach. And the players follow him as they do Marty. Excellent coaching staff. Shannon Sharp is the wide receiver on the near side. And the give is to Bobby Humphrey, Kevin Porter. Derek Thomas, Charlie came flying in from the backside and, and finished the play off. That quickness he's got, they couldn't touch him. But watch him come down the line of scrimmage and just use that blazing speed and come right to the ball. And so you know he's behind you. And it's tough to cut back, he'll be there. This guy has become one of the great ones in the game. The best thing to do, I think, is run right at him. He's not that big. Second and nine. Pressure throws pass is complete. Close to the first down. Clarence K, the tight end. And Ron Cherry was the man who brought him down. Now let's check the Xerox 10-minute ticker. And it's an afternoon of field goals everywhere else. Chicago over Washington, 3-0. New Orleans and the Rams tied at three. And here it is, Kansas City 7 and Denver nothing. With 10.42 and counting time remaining in the second quarter. Elway, 7 of 8 for 74 yards, quietly moving the ball court. And has a first down. And has another first down inside the 20-yard line as Mark Jackson goes up and pulls it down. Albert Lewis was there for Kansas City. Elway was well protected. And he took his time and leaned into the throw, which he can do so beautifully. Everything's picked up. And now you have, it's tough to catch his ball. He throws a real sharp, hard ball. And guys like Jackson have to really get acquainted with his kind of throw. It's a completely different pass than, say, Steve DeBerg throws. It gets there quick, but it's tougher to handle. Mark Jackson, elusive and strong. That is the quote on his ability. And here's Humphrey. Gain of three to the 16. It'll be second down in seven. Bill Moss making the stop. Doug Rydell, the right guard, pulled and really hit Derek Thomas, who was sitting in there playing that trap. But Rydell did a fine job, and Thomas didn't like it. They really gave each other some problems with it. And this is what you have to do with Thomas. You'll see the pull coming to the outside, down the line of scrimmage, and the trap. Right there is where the hit's made. Oh, that was close. Shannon Sharp, who has become 
a key receiver for Elway was the intended one. Kevin Porter had the coverage. It looked as though Porter got a little desperate right at the end of that play. But more importantly, on the back side of the play, Derek Thomas was pass rushing, and Denver had two people on him. They had the running back and the tackle, and they picked him up just in time. So the strategy is to put two people, whenever you're throwing the ball down the field, against Derek Thomas. And Porter got away with the pro move, had his hands on his back inside. The officials couldn't see him as they were pushing each other. Thank okay. you. to Michael Young. Lloyd Burris is there to bring him down. Young, 15 receptions in the last four games, had only three before that. And when we talked with him yesterday, remember he had the flu last week. He was really hurting. Had that great fourth course, and he could hardly move. But he feels good for this ball game. He's a good possession receiver, much more like uh, Harry is for you know, Harry is for uh, Kansas City. He was describing all of the other receivers that exciting, great hands, great athletic ability, and he said, I'm dependable. I want to be exciting in a game room. <laughs> Here's a 27-yard field goal. High snap, and we've got flags and whistles. Well, that was Dino Moss, Ooh. and the Chiefs thought they had something because, re remember, they just, uh, a couple of the guys just sort of intimated when we talked about blocked field goals, a uh, blocked field goal, that Moss was going to have and a big day blocking a field goal. Where's going five yards? Who's going? Dino had something, or excuse me, Bill had something that uh, he knew would be there. And you see him try to slip inside to get there quick and couldn't make it. Could have been, could have been the offensive center. Sometimes they would just kind of flex their hands just enough for the veins to pop out and they'll go on. Well, Marsh thought he had a block. The coaches thought he had a block. The ball at the five. First and goal. flag is down in the corner and it's a touchdown. Shannon Sharp. That is his first NFL touchdown. Kevin Ross just let him get a, a jump on him and then he had to just play the receiver and not the ball. So one way or the other that was going to be at least to the one yard line with pass interference. little communication between the officials. And what a moment that is. Pass interference, number 31 defense. That penalty will be declined. We have a touchdown. Now you can see Kevin Ross was really desperate. And he let Sharp get a jump on him and couldn't do much about it. There's a really starting in, bending out. Now you see Ross loses his step. Now it might be that slight injury he had earlier. So he lost his step, and then he just had to play only the receiver. And Shannon Sharp, who has been a special teams leader, has his touchdown, and the extra point is wide left. Wasn't even close from there. Second time that Treadwell has missed this year on an extra point attempt. There just isn't anything routine in football. The hold is good and he just pulls it across to the left. His timing might have been upset. The hold was a little slow, but that's not good enough. Just can't have a routine play. Number 63 is Bill Moss. He jumped off side on the, what would have been the field goal attempt at the first down, and then Denver went in for the score. McNair and Saxon are the return men. And here is Todd McNair to the 20. And is hit at the 25 and dead. Lilo Lang is the man who brought him down. Kick off your night on NBC with all new specials and a world premiere movie. First, get on the holiday spirit with the animated special, The Chipmunks Rocking Through the Decade. Followed by the popular live action Saturday morning show, Saved by the Bell in prime time. It's been an hour with Robert Redford and Sidney Pollack, the men in their movies. Followed by an NBC world premiere movie based on a true story, Good Cops, Bad Cops, starring Ed Asner and Ray Sharkey tonight only on NBC. And the 
Kansas City from their own 25-yard line first down. A fumble, and the bird falls on it, and it was the fumble on the exchange to the running back that Denver recovered that set up their touchdown drive as Cragen fell on it. It appears that his pulling guard, Zott, picked the ball out of his hand just slightly. I think it was alt number 76 pulling to his right, and Steve didn't protect the ball. Now, you see on both people pulling, and oh, it was Zott. Steve didn't have that ball protected, and his guard knocked the ball out. Well, that's two plays in a row, isn't it, Charlie? Yes, it is. Two mishandled plays, and we haven't done that all year. This is the kind of thing that spells upset. Again, hey, you've go, got to get go. in the end zone early hey, against a team like Denver. You've got to force Elway to have to throw, then you can tee off on him. But right now at 7-6, Elway's got all his options. Second and 17, Chiefs at their own 18 yard line. Very word is the running back. And we have flags, but no whistle, and then we'll have the whistle. As Ron Holmes was way off size, the question, of course, is, is was he drawn? Well, Ron came close to a, an unsportsmanlike conduct there because he, he heard the whistle and he was still going for Elway. For the bird. Uh, did I say? That's right, I did too. Right Encroachment, there. defense, five yards, it's for a second down. Now you'll see him come off the ball, number 90. He's clearly offside. Nobody can block him. Now he's still after Steve, Steve DeBerg. And uh, that's tight because he heard that whistle. So with the penalty, the ball goes to the 23-yard line. And it is second down and 12. A look at the penalty. 45 yards to 23. And DeBerg has pressure. He gets it off. It is low and it is incomplete. Just outside the 30-yard line to Amy O'Hare. A week, a week ago, uh, no pass rush out of Denver, and the Raiders had all day to throw. That on that play, there was some heat put on. Lucas number 59 did very well, certainly Fletcher, but they're getting push on DeBerg, and he has to throw quickly. Well, look at that. He had to get rid of the ball. Simon Fletcher number 73. When we talked to him yesterday, he has bought John Elway's old house. <laughs> And I said, are you making any change? He said, well, the wallpaper's not quite right, and we're adding a barbecue in the back. He said, because when Elway had a barbecue, he always had it catered. He, everything was catered. <laughs> but Elway moved up a notch, and in came Fletcher, and then he'll move up a notch. Flags are down. It is a free play. It is going to be a first down for Kansas City. Todd McNair out to the 45-yard line. No Atwater, one covered Atwater, him. Atwater finally made the stop. I was wondering if, if, if Denver was looking for a, for a whistle for it the could, play to be stopped that, that with could, the play. That could have been a factor, but Atwater normally covering McNair uh, allowed well, him to seven, break inside. 7-7 seven seven defense, penalty decline, first down. So we didn't see Atwater on his man, which he's, I'm sure, been rehearsing all week. You see McNair on the left coming up the field and then breaking across. Atwater's in his zone. Everybody else is in a man. What apparently happened there was a miscommunication after Kansas City came out of the huddle. Whatever calls were made, blown covers. You can see, uh, you see Dan concerned about that. Does that kill you? Gain of 23, first down at the 46 line. Kansas City up by one, seven six. There's that bootleg. Great play. And the pass is a little tall for Rob Thomas. Everything set up. It was all there. Called at just the right time. And it looks as though DeBerg led Thomas just too far. Faking was very good. You'll see DeBerg faking and now keeping that ball after that one-handed fake. No one there. And there's a throw just a little too far outside. Now, Thomas, a lot of people would have caught that ball. And as fine an athlete as Thomas is, he didn't absorb it. It'll be second down and ten. Mike Webster is back in at offensive center for Kansas City. Number on the bird. And here is Word. And Barry will go to the 49-yard line. He'll have three, so it'll be third down and seven. Carl Mecklenburg with the tackle. It's good to see uh, Mike Webster back in the game because he's such a, an interesting and colorful guy. He checks back and blocks Holmes. Now, Word is so good at this because his speed is deceptive. He's much faster and stronger than you'd think. 
the combined experience now of the center, Mike Webster, and the quarterback, Steve DeBerg. 31 years, 409 games, 321 starts. Well, that's a lot of football. Both guys are expert. A lot of football? Well, it's that's an understatement. Well, I try, that's, is that a cliche? I hope no, 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 no. I just think, I just think that it's... it's, it's, it's but, you, you know, know it's uh, awesome. Uh, Webster is such a student of the game. His wisdom as a football player has helped Greenhard and the rest of the offensive line. He's going to make an excellent coach if he so decides. They're down in seven. Incomplete. He was going to Emil Harry. And Kip Corrington had the coverage. It'll be fourth down. There was more heat on DeBerg these last two passes. Den Denver's generated, I bet, a number of games recently. So Brian Barker will be kicking for Kansas City. You see 550 time remaining first half. Johnson, fair catch, and he takes it at the 15-yard line. Denver has the ball. Kansas City has the lead, 7-6. to six. NBC Sports coverage of the National Football League is brought to you by today's Chevrolet, who invites you to see why more people are winning with the heartbeat of America. By Miller Lite, with a reminder to please think when you drink this holiday season. By Radio Shack, America's technology store. Nobody compares for Christmas shopping. And by Aris Isotoner. Take care of the hands that take care of you. Isotoner gloves for men. The Denver Broncos trailing by one here in Kansas City, 7-6 with the mixed missed extra point. Will be starting from their own 15-yard line. This is their fourth offensive possession. They have started the 12, the 15, the turnover at their own 47-yard line. That is the one that they moved in to score on. Missed the extra point now for their 15. Good play fake by Elway. He rolls and throws, and coming back down the sideline is Vance Johnson right at the, the first down marker. Albert Lewis at the cover. That's why uh, this, that particular play is why Denver has done so well over the years. Elway timing that pass to Johnson. That looked like it didn't have a chance. It was a good fake in here by John coming outside. Now, Johnson has to come right back toward, the, toward him to make the stop. He was 20 yards down the field. He plants and comes running right back at John Elway, so the defender just can't get close to the ball. And did one of the Chiefs get a hand on the football? Looked as if one of the linebackers did. He had. And deflected it just a bit, but the pass still was successful. But John's strong arm, and then his receivers sprinting people deep down the field and coming right back down the line after the ball. And Very picking up the first down. talk with Dan Reeves yesterday he said last time we had a year like this we got John Elway well I've spoken with him and it, it does, it's not much consolation right now but they're setting themselves up to have a great season next year an early draft choice regrouping during the year everybody rededicated and I think they'll come back and have a super year in 91. Elway 11 of 13 180 yards with Bobby Humphrey that was a move. And he'll pick up wow. nine yards on the play. Porter with the tackle. Now that is quickness. I'm sure that he doesn't really think about it. Humphrey doesn't really think about it. But now watch this move. Start out quick. And he takes a guy like Ross, a, a fine cornerback, and he gets an extra five yards on him on that move. So this is a guy that's going to be there for many years and get that 1,000-yard uh, season year after year. He is stuck. Kansas City was waiting for him right at the line of scrimmage. It'll be third down. Bill Moss did a fine job just breaking down the tackle of Daryl Hamilton. Just physically taking him down inside and, and cutting off the ball carry. He couldn't go anywhere. This is the big, solid, massive guy that you need to play that position. And he has made the move from inside nose tackle to a step or two outside and has really been successful. And that's a hard move to make. And Humphrey this time will pick up the first down as he just plows through right behind his right guard. 
And let's check the 10 minute ticker and update the other late scores. Chicago with another field goal, now leading 6 0. Jim Everett scored a touchdown. The Rams are up 10 3 in that ballgame. Yeah, this time of year, Charlie, it's uh, this is the toughest. The weather's going to start getting bad. Then you have back to back games against tough opponents, and the real character of teams shows up. First down, Denver at their own 37 yard line. Kansas City leads by one, 7 6. Elway turns back and fires to Vance Johnson. And Johnson has the first down into Chiefs territory around the Kansas City 48-yard line. So he's going to pick up about 15 before Kevin Porter makes the tackle. This is a great job of drilling the ball into the backside. Elway goes to his left. Johnson starts in and slides out into the hole. Then Elway drills the ball. Really, very few quarterbacks can do what Elway does. Going left, pivoting, and throwing back so accurately to the right. How do you stop Elway? Oh, gee. You just have to have some patience and tackle the receivers. Humphrey on the draw. Very casual as he was looking around trying to fake Kansas City. They didn't buy it. He'll pick up a yard. Sally Amua with the stop, number 97. Earlier this year, he was trying to teach me that Samoan war dance. Humphrey went with it. Obviously, then he gave up. He said, I wasn't coordinated enough to do it. He's a nice man. He is a good guy. And uh, he can do a lot of things. They, they even drop him back into his own defense against the pass on occasion. He's the ideal nose guard. He's six foot, 300 pounds. Two minute warning. Kansas City leads seven to six. The Chiefs a big following among the youngsters here in the Midwest. They, they had a contest of grade school kids for drawings, and they used these drawings on the tickets. And this is today's ticket. Let's go. Total yards. Denver, 136. Kansas City, 136. Of course, it's a score 7-6. Always throwing this one away is what he was doing. And then Shannon Sharp almost made the play. But he was just getting rid of it. He was out of time. Shannon can explode. He accelerated that ball. It looked like an impossible catch. Now, this is your veteran quarterback. Much as uh, Steve DeBerg is for Kansas City, Elway knows just when he has to get rid of a ball. And Sharp missed by a half an inch, maybe, of having a coming up with some. Sharp with two receptions, 32 yards in his first NFL touchdown. He only had one in the second one. Was out, and of course, that's the reason they called it incomplete. And it goes back to third and nine at the original line of scrimmage. Away over the middle. Vance Johnson with a full head of steam inside the Kansas City 22-yard line. That's the first blitz I've seen Kansas City run. It was picked up. Elway kept his poise, hit his crossing receiver. You'll see Elway in the shotgun, and, and you'll see people coming up from all over the place. And that puts poor Pearson, number 24, in a foot race with Johnson, and he can't stay with him. And is Johnson a smart runner? He just used every bit of speed he had along that sideline, not stopping to dodge somebody. And that was third and nine, a gain of 25, and the first down conversion just inside the Kansas City 22-yard line. Out of time remaining in the half, 147, second quarter. Flag is down, Elway with all the time in the world. This one is incomplete. As Vance Johnson went up for it, couldn't pull it down. We'll go back to the flag. Looks like Bill Moss was uh, jumping again. Elway does a beautiful job with the snap count, his cadence. Everybody on that Kansas City team knows it. And DeBerg equally is well, good. Is Number six and three in the defense. Five yards, first down. That's on Moss. Yeah. But DeBerg is known for the hard count, but Elway is uh, coming back with it today. Elway in the past, everybody's been so damned upset at him and Dan Reeves because Elway used to use his shoulders and his helmet to get people to move. But they cut that out of it, and he still can do it with his voice. Well, they call it the Bob Greasy rule because oh. Bob would do it with a head bob. With a head bob, everybody would do it. Bob ought to be ashamed. <laughs> he is. He told me he is. Little play action, rolling right, throwing into oh. bad oh. pass, and Trask K was wide open. Wasn't a chief within seven yards of him, and you won't see that happen. 
him to that way. He, and he knows it. He's the first one to know it. Well, when you run parallel to the receiver, the ball always will stay out in front of both of you. So when John threw it, that ball just stayed clear to the outside. You almost have to throw it right at the receiver when you're running parallel with him. Second and five. That was something. Those are the kind of plays that drive the coaches crazy because they set those plays up with their other calls. And then if you don't get it done, it's tough to come back to. This is the 10th play of the drive. Remember, we noted it. It started back at the Denver 15, and this is incomplete. Mark Jackson, the intended receiver. Now, he and the tight end Clarence K were in the same neighborhood. Did they, uh, did they miss a route? Well, it could have been very much some kind of a pick play with one man trying to scraping the defender off the other man. You see Jackson coming up the field, and there comes his man right by it. Now, I would think Jackson's job was to cut off Kay's defender, but it didn't time out well. Third and five. Elway looked as if he wanted to hand off on a draw, then he throws in the end zone, and it's a oh. touchdown. What a play by John Elway and, and his receiver. And Michael Young. Oh, yeah. Michael kept both feet, both, you know, like two bodies. The bottom part didn't move, and the top part had to catch the ball. But Elway's spontaneous plays. He starts left on a fake, then comes outside, and look at the throw. Perfect throw. Oh, perfect throw. And watch the feet. The Chiefs have failed to put him out. You know, the Chiefs had, with that first touchdown, had Denver on the ropes and failed to get it done. This is much like the Raiders did a week ago. The Raiders sort of fortunately won, but Denver just isn't going to quit. The dancing toes of Michael Young, and that is so hard to do to keep the feet in bounds when everything else is moving. And this extra point is good, but just barely on the right side. So Denver takes the lead, 85 yards on the drive and 11 plays, and Rich Goins is on that billboard in Denver hoping for a Bronco victory so he can come down. Watch Elway start left, trying to pull the pass rush left. There it is, looking that way. Now coming outside, see pass protectors waiting for their man. Now watch John throw on the run. This is where his great talent lies, being able to throw on the run. He's done it every year of his career, going all the way back to high school. But look at this. And, and I, I, there's a shot there with Reeves. The two of them are communicating now where they may not have been early in the year. Todd McNair on the kickoff return. In fact, yesterday, there was a 4 o'clock meeting on Saturday afternoon, and we waited to see Dan. And uh, I said, what are they doing meeting at 4 o'clock? And, and you, you pointed out that was the communication that he's working now more and more with Elway. And uh, pretty soon John's going to say, though, I'm tired of going to meetings. A lot of meetings. A lot coach. of meetings. Uh, he may go, have to go to the press on his meeting time. <laughs> yeah. But Mike Shanahan does a, uh, does a nice job with the quarterback. But Dan Reeves now is a, a factor. So they're, they bridged whatever gaps developed. That's why I think uh, 1991 will be a great year for Denver. Kansas City first down their own 27-yard line. The bird just drops it over the middle to Todd McNair. McNair out to the 50-yard line. He has 23 on the play before Kip Corrington can stop him. Moving on the one-minute mark, time remaining in the first half. Steve Atwater, that's his coverage man, and Steve was lagging way behind McNair. He's being fooled by something. And the bird throws on target, 41-yard line. And that is Rob Thomas. Randy Robbins covers him immediately. And Kansas City will take a timeout to stop the clock with 51 seconds, and they're coming right back. This is good for Kansas City. These are the kind of things they're going to have to be able to do in playoff games or big games when there's one drive remaining very similar to the to the 49ers in Montana. The championship teams developed this. Joe Gibbs teams have always had this, this uh, earmark, and now they're developing it here. Next Saturday, big showdown on NBC. NFL Live will start it off. 
the Buffalo Bills and the New York Giants. They both win today, and uh, that should be a good one. That should be a good one. Well, it's like... Uh... How do you like that? The two How do teams you... haven't seen each other. I don't think they played very often. I don't no. know what their records are against each other, both in the same state. But these are the two big physical teams in both conferences having a showdown, and it could be a prelude to the Super Bowl. Very well could be. Or at least a prelude to the type of game right. we'll see in the yeah. Burton, the intended receiver. And Lilo Lang. Someone has juiced up that front four for Denver because this week they're so much quicker, more aggressive, and determined on going to the passer. Uh, a week ago they weren't doing it. But guys like Holmes, number 90, he has been a force so far today. No question about it. They're down and one. This is the the one area Denver thinks they must improve is pass rushers. And an early draft choice, we can talk about later, might be over in Boulder, one of those linebackers. Here's the first down. And looking to see if the Chiefs stop the clock. And they're going, they had already called the second play. The ball at the 37-yard line. The pass flag is down. Rob Thomas on the receiving end. Steve Atwater there for Denver. A lot of poise by Steve DeBerg. Right in the thick of that combat, he's finding his fourth receiver. I thought one of the offensive linemen for Kansas City moved though, right before the snap. We didn't get a flag there. That's what I thought I saw. Hey, line it up. Line it up. The ball is at the 27-yard line. We have illegal use of our hands by the defense. The ball is very close to a first down. I will measure it before I give the captain his option. So they're so close. With 21 seconds, the Berg's got a chance to get the ball, at least go for the end zone a couple of times. And he wants to save a timeout. He has two remaining. I think he wants to save a timeout for the field goal team to oh, come sure. in so they don't have to rush in. Yeah, 21 seconds really cuts it down. They're going to have to stop the clock immediately with a timeout if the ball's in play when the whistle blows. Now he'll have the options. The bird wasn't looking uh, it, was, it, was, it would be a first down, five yards in a first down, or they'll take the yardage. We have not much to go for a first down. The penalty for illegal use of hands has declined. Second down. So DeBerg is taking the extra four and a half yards is what he is doing, and that costs him a down. The yardage against the clock, that is what is going on now. 21 seconds left in the first half, and the ball at the 27-yard line. You go to the end zone here? I would go to the end zone on the first play. Try to 
explain it in a friendly way. <laughs> but Rob Thomas, I'm sure there was a hand signal or some kind of a helmet signal with a nod of his head telling Thomas to go to the post because DeBerg saw something in the defense. And Thomas didn't spot it, that's my guess. And here is Nick Lowry. He has hit his last 13 field goals in a row. And this will be from 33 yards away, well within his range. So as the play develops, you'll see this break instead of that break, and that's what where the miscommunication happened, and uh, it could have been a touchdown. You see the out nod. Now look at the hole in the middle that Rob Thomas breaks outside. And uh, Steve DeBerg, you see he's shocked, and now he's trying to figure, he doesn't want to insult Rob. He's got to talk to him about it. You see he's... Uh, sure in his mind where the receiver should have gone. Now they're exchanging on it. You wonder what that little black on your screen was. That's videotape when it runs out. That's what happens, you know, just in case you I were wondering. I made a mistake. No, no, no. To... No, no, no. <laughs> and also, remember that this will be, if the score holds up, the 13th time this year that Denver has led at the half. And of the previous 10 times that they have led at half, they have only won three. They've lost seven. So uh, they have been they have really been outscored by more than 100 points in the second half, totaling up all their volume. Picked up, dropped, and then recovered. Of course, I mentioned the clock starts as soon as the ball is touched. And clock runs out, and that is it. At half, Denver 13, Kansas City 10. Let's go to New York and Bob Casas. Bob? 15 and kind of crawls his way out to the 20-yard line before James Saxon stops him. And let's uh, take a quick look at the statistics of the first half. And they kind of balance off pretty much against each other. Yards rushing and yards passing, total yards. Quarterback comparison. 165 yards apiece. Pretty darn good. Interesting factor is no running game by either team, and both wanted to come in here and dominate the other with their running game. So it will turn out to be a uh, quarterback contest, I think, in the second half. And Elway starts for the Denver 20. As time goes deep, double coverage. Incomplete. Vance Johnson, the intended receiver. Deron Cherry and Kevin Ross both there. We have the report on all the Kansas City Chiefs that were injured in the first half. They should all be back with the possible exception of Albert Lewis. Here's another look. Deron Cherry is in perfect position as a free safety to make a play on that ball. John Airway wanted to throw to his right and came off his receiver a little too early, threw right into the middle, and Cherry was right there, right on the spot. Good news for Kansas City fans. Albert Lewis is back in to start the second half. It'll be second down and 10. Elway fires just a little behind Mark Jackson. It's incomplete. It'll be third and ten. Elway looked for Sewell to the outside early, then just turned and threw to Jackson. And Jackson just didn't see that ball coming quickly enough. Slant pattern, and watch where the ball comes just behind him. John looked right to the outside, then turned and threw inside and missed his receiver. Somebody's going to make that play and win this ball game. Those kinds of plays. Michael Young wide to the near side. Bass Johnson is inside of him and two wide receivers on the far side. Four-man rush by Kansas City. Deep single coverage. Kevin Ross had perfect position. Shannon Sharp, the intended receiver. Ross was in beautiful shape, as you say, 
Charlie, inside his receiver and also forcing the receiver along the sideline. And Sharp just couldn't do anything about it. Ross had him pinned, pinned on the sideline and staying abreast with him. Now watch this beautiful position of staying with his receiver. And then when the receiver looks to the ball, then Ross looked back himself and made a play. First turnover of the second half. They have turnovers that plagued the Broncos. But on the good side of the Denver coin, it was 40 yards of the interception. That is the, about the same result as the punt. Kansas City from their own 40-yard line. They start with good field position. And here is a Koye, and he has a yard and a half, maybe two. And Warren Powers is there to greet him. They're meeting a Koye. They're coming full speed. He's coming full speed. And these are immense collisions. They're like two freight trains colliding because Koye isn't going to bend. He's not going to cut back. He's not going anywhere but straight ahead, and they know it. So they just tee off on him. to make him change off to that? I'm not sure. He thought he could get single coverage, and he faked so he could get a little time with that bootleg he runs, but Page didn't get inside his defender. He didn't get inside of Robbins, so DeBerg really had nowhere to throw the ball. But he has to do those kind of things. Go for it on occasion. Sounding before the play gets off. It looks like Denver got uh, Zott well, to so move. 79 offense. David Zott moved Denver. when Denver faked the blitz. And as soon as he moved, Ron Holmes moved, number 90, and got the offside. Denver leading 13 to 10 with 13.43 left to go, third quarter. Second half just underway. This guy's a good one. Seventh round pick, former wrestler, excellent wrestler. People thought he'd be too small. He only played offensive line one year of his college career. And a lot of people overlooked him, and he's along the lines of Wisniewski of the Raiders. Excellent potential. The Berg knocked away at the line of scrimmage by Ron Holmes. Holmes with the defensive play. Holmes is playing well. He is. And I can't say he's been doing that in some of the earlier games, but today he is really playing. It's almost like uh, Denver's desperate. And he's being held, and he just keeps putting the pressure. So often, the pass rush includes the blocker who's being pushed back into the pass. And that's what happened there. Parker to kick. Here comes the rush. He gets it off. Fair catch is called for by Vance Johnson, and he'll take it at about the 21-yard line. The score, Denver 13, Kansas City 10. 13 and a half left in the third. NBC Sports coverage of the National Football League is brought to you by Honda, maker of fine quality automobiles. Test drive a Honda at your local dealer today. Buy Diet Coke with 100% NutraSweet. You'll drink it just for the taste of it. By the First Brands Corporation, makers of Prestone Advanced Formula Antifreeze. And by Hertz. We never forget who made us number one. We're Hertz. We're America's wheels. With the kind of weather we're having today, what is it, like it's 60 degrees at kickoff time, as you can see it is absolutely gorgeous. We forget it's the holiday season. Christmas is just gone on the corner. I wonder if it's ever been like this in the Midwest. This weather is unbelievable. Bobby Humphrey gets the call from the 21. He'll go to the 25-yard line. Marty Schottenheimer, the head coach of Kansas City, has had his problems with the Denver Broncos. And look at this. Monkey on my back. I don't know what you're talking about. Well, he is 0-6 in his career as a head coach against 
Dan Reeves and the Denver Broncos. And, and the kind of losses, the kind of losses John Elway's pulled on him is like a dirty oh. trick. Oh, yeah. You know, it, it's it's taking somebody right to the brink where they're celebrating on the sideline then to pull a game away from them. Elway fires over the middle. It is... I believe a complete pass, yes, and a fumble and a scramble for the ball. Kansas City says they have it. And assume they're going to replay this one, Charlie. Shannon Sharp, the receiver, and the officials say it is a complete pass, a fumble, and the turnovers in the second half particularly continue to plague the Broncos. It's tough to say whether he caught it. I didn't think he had it. Good pass protection for John Elway. Oh, that's tight. And that's uh, that's not at full. Can we show that again at full speed? I'm not sure he had possession at full speed. It is a uh, Titan. Kansas City at the Denver 38. Now this is at full speed. An official has to make a call here. I don't think it's possession, but right now Kansas City is going to get the playoff. And the turnover will count. And Okoye goes to the 34-yard line. And again, that's a judgment call. He had it to make is. the judgment call, and it was close either way. Yeah, you can't quarrel with an official on a call like that. Replay helps, but those kind of calls, I don't think coaches or anyone would, would uh, be upset with. Okoye needs his blockers to sustain contact and not unleash somebody on him. If that happens, he can break arm tackles. And on that last play, he got some contact contact sustained by his offensive lineman and then broke the arm tackles as he went by. Second and six. Okoye to the 28-yard line. There it is again. This is what he was doing a year ago, down after down. Breaking with the tackle. If the defender has to contend with a blocker, you'll see it here, and then and make the tackle. You see, contending with a blocker that time for Warren Powers was so difficult because he couldn't quite get off and make a clean tackle. Third down and a foot at the 29-yard line. And you have to make a clean tackle on a Korea. In other words, you have to be there without anybody interfering with it. A Koye again. To the 20-yard line. First down. You know, last week, a Koye ran for only five yards, although he did score two touchdowns. But when we talked with Marty Schottenheimer, he said Christian got every yard that was there. He, in other words, the blocking wasn't enough. Now here he cuts back. He rarely is able to do it. Beautiful job of actually blocking and running people by with Grunhard. And he forces his guy to spin out. Craig to spin out too late. First down at the 20. Denver leads by three. 13-10. There's a play. play action fake. The pass is complete to Bill Jones. It's coming. You hit Akoya inside. Five, five, eight, five, and you know the will then keep the ball on the bootleg. He'll fake to Akoya. Beautiful job. He has people chasing him. And then wide open receiver. Uh, Bill Jones was nobody near him. But his production is falling off. His, Bill Jones's last four receptions were all for touchdowns. Uh, this one he's a yard away. Very disappointing. <laughs> First and goal. Okoye. And he is nailed by Carl Mecklenburg. Now that's vintage oh, Mecklenburg. Yeah. Did he put a stop to it? Great play. Now he's back playing where he belongs. I think everybody agrees, including Dan Reeves, uh, that this guy's an inside linebacker. They moved him to the outside to try to get a pass rusher of significance, and he was okay. But inside, he's still an outstanding player. I'm sure you'll see him there next year. Loss of a yard, second and goal at the two. Okoye left side. Fisher runs in. He's going to spot it short of the goal line. Alton Montgomery made the hit. Fisher was looking right down the lawn. We get Ross 
missed by the marker. Well, his knees Good down. call. Yes, yeah. excellent call. That was a beautiful call by the official, if there's such a thing. They get so expert at these kinds of things. If you and I tried to go out there, we'd and wonder a, who had the ball. And Goye is still down, and we've got an injury timeout. That stops the clock. We have 9.20 is the time remaining in the third quarter. Troy may have fallen on the ball initially and uh, got the wind knocked out of him. Next Saturday on NBC, we'll start, of course, with NFL Live. Today, Buffalo defeated Indianapolis. The Giants defeated Minnesota. And uh, that means that Buffalo and the Giants, they'll be hooking it up on Saturday at the Meadowlands. And this could really be a great football game. Kelly's having a superb year. A lot of people thought he would never have another year like it. But he's really come back to be a premier quarterback. What was the story of Phil Simms uh, and all the jawing that went on with uh, he and Ronnie Lott at the end of the ball? Well, I, I thought ori originally it was that remark Sims made a few years ago uh, claiming that the 49ers uh, sort of uh, gave a game away so the Giants would get into the playoffs. But I found out later that basically Ronnie Lott had made a smart blank remark to uh, Sims during the game. Uh -huh. Afterwards, Sims approached Ronnie, and then later after the game, they got together in, in the training room of the 49ers. But uh, mm. but Sims as a mean, tough competitor. Oh, yes. And, and you just had the inside story. And uh, Kelly yeah. is a mean, tough competitor. <laughs> yeah. That's so be a that good one. should be a good one. Now let's check the Hertz 10-minute ticker rundown of all the scores today. Buffalo winning Houston. A huge total. That is their largest win in the history. Uh, San Francisco in overtime over Cincinnati. Pittsburgh wins big. The Giants had to come from behind. I believe with 13 unanswered points. Seattle, boy, you got to Seattle's going to sneak around and make the playoffs. You got to watch them. Phoenix over Atlanta. Seattle, Charlie has got <laughs> one hell of a football. Oh, yes, I tell you. I'll tell you. Chuck Knox doing a great job. He's done it without the personnel year yeah. after year. Oh, yeah. They got a good one. Uh, sh Chicago with another field goal. You saw that they were in front. Here it is, Denver 13, Kansas City 10. 9.20 is the time remaining. And this is an ominous sight. Actually, it shouldn't be because this is all precautionary, but it always bothers me when this happens. But they just want to double check, and they have x-ray equipment here and the, and the finest, finest of medical equipment in the National Football League. So. You think Christian Okoye is indestructible. But uh, this game is so violent that even a guy like uh, this, this great athlete can have an injury. Oh, he's moving both, both knees. He's, that's not the problem. And that's good news. Oh, that is news. Take another look. An excellent blocking. He just, he tripped. He tripped over one of his own men. Is that what happened? That's what it was. Yep. Just got tangled in people's legs. But... He was out of the game, getting his legs tangled up, so it's not a tearing, severe-type injury, I don't believe. There it is. Yeah, but I wonder... I, I was just thinking it might be they were looking at the right wrist, too, if it might have been that when he tried to brace him. So we'll have a report, of course. See how they're holding that? They're holding that right wrist. May have been that when he tried to protect himself when he goes down, and that's just a, well, a normal Kansas reaction. Kansas City isn't going to lose a step, and you know that. There's Barry Words in the game, and Barry is one of the bright, young, aspiring stars in the league. But right now, the Broncos are fastening the goal line stand. They have done it twice. It was first and goal at the one, second and goal at the two. Now it's third and goal, and just inches away. Well, again, the linebackers for, for Denver have to gamble. They've got to start for and come over the top. Very word, and he does not go in. Denver does it again. Carl Mecklenburg, he read that play beautifully. And he came in behind it, and he sort of gambled. He took a shot when that ball was snapped. Watch him move immediately, right pilfering right in behind people. Now, do you go for it, or do you go for the field goal? Hummer, hummer, hummer. I don't know. Oh, that's a tough call. <laughs> Kansas City's going for it. Crowd wants them to. If you're going to win the championship, you got to do it. Word. Touchdown.
to make a call like that, you have to believe in John Alt and David Zott and Tim Grunhard that are blocking. You have to know it's going to be there. And they did a beautiful job with it. Uh, David Zott he pulled around to the outside and cut his man down. So really, that calls related to the confidence you have in your offensive line. Second half turnovers plaguing the Broncos. Kevin Ross recovered the fumble, 38 yards on the drive, eight plays. It took 417, and the Broncos were holding at the goal line. Ross with an interception and a fumble recovery. Now Elway will have a, still another opportunity as Lowry will kick off. And here is Montgomery at the two. He blocks it, picks it up at the three. And he's back at the two. Todd McNair got him. How do you... This, this is Denver's plight all year. Individual breakdowns. Just simply mishandling a kickoff. No reason to mishandle it. Then taking your eye off it. And all H breaks loose. Kansas City is so inspired this year playing so intensely that any flaw, anything that shows up, they take advantage of. And in addition, there was a flag against Denver at the 13. They split the distance to the goal line. Denver starts at their one. Game, I 
saw Norma Hunt, Lamar's wife, and she said, I, it said it was so exciting that I wanted Lamar to take out a full-page ad in the Kansas City Star and thank everybody for cheering for the Chiefs. And I said, did he do it? He said, well, no, he said he took out a half-page ad. the rule book rule because it is being enforced and you know kansas city people are rather sophisticated now just think if they were in cleveland down <laughs> at that end of the stadium Ooh. it would be bombs away <laughs> <laughs> bobby humphrey he's got a couple of yards the ball kicks out, but the play was dead. What they have to do here is get room for their punter. They don't want to have a punter that's any less than 14 yards from the center. And so when you're backed up, the timing of the punt, the snap, and then the, the punt rushers, who are outstanding for Kansas City, have a better shot at it. So Elway's got to get another two or three yards on this play. And Bobby Humphrey came into the game needing 49 yards to reach 1,000 yards for the second year in a row in his first two years. He has 36, so he is 13 yards shy of that mark. He'll get it this year. He may not get it today, but he could. Elway scrambles, throws, passes, complete to Jackson. That was third down, about eight to go. And he throws for 23. Now he is trapped and for all intents and purposes. Look at this. He's going to have a safety and he throws on the run with two people hanging on him. Well, this is so, so much like uh, the, the Randall Cunningham play a week ago. Thomas comes inside and almost gets there with two people blocking him. A first down at the Denver 27-yard line. Humphrey, those yards are tough inside. He'll get a couple, maybe three. And now Tipper's beginning to flare just a bit. Sally Lua with the tackle. Here's the injury report on Christian Okoye, a strained right shoulder, questionable if he can return. They'll mark the ball at the 29, so it'll be second down and eight. Exactly, Marty Schottenheimer calming down. Don't lose your poise. You've got the lead, 17-13. You've been in this position. You have to know how it is to play in this position. And don't lose the game on a dumb mistake. That's really what you say. Humphrey? Nothing is there. He'll get a yard to the 30. It's going to be third down and seven. This guy, Neil Smith, is becoming a real football player. And people questioned a lot of things about him early on. This this year, with the kind of coaching he's receiving, uh, it really has shown up because he's really using all of his abilities now. And he's, he's becoming a great one with great athletic ability. Tom Pratt, the defensive line coach, has done an excellent job. He really has. You know, Neil Smith suffered uh, with uh, dyslexia as it was yes. read backwards yes. all his life, and people couldn't identify him. And he was accused of things, and... People wondered about a lot of his intelligence, and come to find out that's the only problem he had. And since then, he's, he's uh, gotten the kind of education he needed and the help he needed, and he's a real neat guy in his service to the community. And he's working with kids that have the same, youngsters have problem. the same problem, yes. You know, in his, in his time, they didn't identify him. And here is Elway. The man's amazing. 42-yard line. First down. Remember not so long ago, it was third and eight in the channel of the goal boat. Now first down at the Denver 42. Play action fake. And he gets the pass off to Clarence K. And K battles to the 39-yard line. Was that the grasp or wasn't it? You never know. He got that ball off before, I guess, 
the whistle could be blown. Now look at Martin, unblocked. Elway sees him, throws the ball. I think if Martin had had Elway below the waist, they'd have called it. Unblocked, they assume that Martin, here's coming outside is K uncovered, but they assume Martin would be fooled and he wasn't. But there's Benny Jellway. I've said it any number of times today, but this is, how could people call about Elway? I've read some the newspaper columns about him. Uh, I, I can't believe it, how fortunate the people of Denver are to have this guy. 19 yards to the Kansas City 39. Here's Kerry Porter. And that is his first rush of the season. Now he has caught a few passes, three, but that's the first time he's carried. And he has, has three to the 36. And it'll be second down and seven. Now, John Elway, you recruited John Elway for Stanford. Now, how is he as a college, as a high school quarterback? Well, it was much the same. That's everybody in the country wanted John. The concern was how much baseball he wanted in his life because he was a fine baseball player. And here is Bobby Humphrey. And with that run, he should go over the 1,000 mark for the second year in a row. This is... Extremely well blocked, extremely well blocked. With Humphrey, once that ball carrier gets the blocking out of the line, let's just say the first four yards are blocking, from that point on, it's the ball carrier's ability. And that time, the blocking got him the first four. He now has 1,005 yards on the season, back-to-back 1,000-yard -back seasons for Bobby Humphrey in his first two years in the NFL, and joins a very select group of players. And here he is again. This time he'll have a yard. It'll be second down and nine. Moss with the tackle. And those select players, they are 1,000 yards rushing. First two seasons. Brockington, Dorsett, Earl Campbell, Andrew. Oh, is Andrew good? Since Dickerson. And now Bobby Humphrey. Oh, that's a pretty good group. That is a good group. I tell you, the guy that I had so much respect for is William Andrews of the Atlanta Falcons. What a great player he was prior to that injury. injury. Second and nine. And the draw, Humphrey. Fumble, and Kansas City has it. The third turnover of the second half for the Broncos. But he's lost the ball somewhere in that traffic. Lloyd Burris stripped him of the ball and the reaction of Dan Reed. We'll be back in a moment. When we went away, the ball was at the 20. Now it's at the 35-yard line. There was a scuffle right as we went into commercial and a personal foul penalty charged against... We believe one of the Wydell brothers of Denver and so Kansas City starts from their own 35-yard line. And here is Barry Woodard, and Woodard is to the 50. And then out of bounds. They're going to rule, I think he stepped out at the 36-yard line. He was hit right at the line of scrimmage. I believe it was Dennis Smith that was right there and had a chance to make the big stop. Watch number 49 coming right up in the middle of the screen. There's the stop, and Word just lowers his shoulder and breaks the tackle. And Smith, not a bad tackle. 29 yards on the play. It's Kansas City 17, Denver 13. Here's another look. And Smith gives him a shot, but the old coach's uh, axiom, you've got to wrap him up, and he didn't do it. to go in the third and word to the 33 a gain of three it'll be second down and seven Atwater with a tackle and the Hurts 10 minute ticker an update Washington trailing Chicago Chicago with three field goals Rams over New Orleans by three and here at Arrowhead it is Kansas City 17 and Denver 13 now with 107 and counting time remaining in the third quarter Kansas City is Actually going to their running game to control the ball. And to work a little on the clock, and also when you've got Barry Word, he can shoulder that load as he carries here. Because he's strong. And 
one thing that Dan Reeves told us about is that he cuts back as well as anybody in the league. He likes to cut to daylight or to twilight or to darkness now as time has settled on us here in the Midwest. Ward has done the same number of times in the second half. He comes in and begins to dominate the game. Now, part of that domination is the offensive line for Kansas City. Third down and one. And word to the 17. He just talked cutback, Charlie, and that's what he did. He broke behind Greg Cragen and just split the defense. And there's a marker on the play. You see Cragen and Grunhardt going left, and Word just breaks right in behind him. Personal foul, unnecessary roughness, number 71 defense, after the play. Half the distance, first down. So costly when you lose your composure, and they'll add it to the end of the run. Grunhardt did a beautiful job on Cragen, and we didn't see the foul. He must have just been frustrated. And time runs out. Third quarter is over. We'll be right back after these messages from your local station. As we start the fourth quarter, it is Kansas City 17, Denver 13. And Kansas City has the ball just inside the Denver 9-yard line. Denver has been penalized for 70 yards, Kansas City for 33. Shots at it and couldn't stop it. Now we may have a review. So five out of Jones's last six receptions have been for touchdowns. On the field, we roll a completed pass, a touchdown. The, but the play is being reviewed. That's just to explain it is being reviewed. We'll take another look at it. There's a good look at Jones slipping right out into the flak and, and nobody paying attention to him sort of relieved he's not going to block him. That's the five. Oh, you can't tell from there, but I think, do we have another angle? I think we do. It looked as though the ball was inside. Now you'll see him slip right out into the flat, uh, right here, into the flat, and then, of course, work up the sun. Meanwhile, there's a fake to the inside right here. Now just watch the ball. It's I'll watch his right feet. hand. Out of, oh, out of bounds there. Yeah. And the question is, at that point, had the ball broken the plane? And it has to be conclusive. Now, that's a high shot. And these are the men that are reviewing it. Chuck Heberling is the replay official. If it's not a touchdown, it's on the goal oh. line. I mean, oh, yeah. it's, it's within six inches of the goal Second line. down and goal to go. But remember what Denver did at the other end. I mean, they put on a great goal line. Here's a, This is that same high angle. Foots out, there. the ball is not over Ooh, the goal. Not over the I, I would think you have to reverse it. All fairness, I think you have to reverse it. You know, the only question, he's definitely out of bounds. Question, did the ball break the plane? And you need you need that shot right down the goal line. And uh, now now here's the, here's the final word. After review, the ball is ruled dead at the half-yard line. It will be second. I get either either way they rule it, I've got to I got to say that's a, that's a good choice. That's sure. Either way. That's what replays for, sure. and that's why it functions. Yep. If this were the, the for the championship on the last play of the game, they've got to make the same call though. Right. You've got to be consistent with the rule. 
and that's the way it should be. The only thing that bothers me, I think that it's a guess from that shot. See, they only see what, what we see and what the viewer sees at home. They don't have any special camera. And that's a, that's a guess, and I don't like them to make a decision on the guess, although I think they guess right. Play action fake all alone. Dante Whitaker. Well, you can afford to do that at first and goal on a six inch line. And the, the eye formation off tackle play with Word faking in there like this, pulling everybody. And it appears Mecklenburg had the coverage. He came up to stop the run and Whitaker was just totally uncovered. And that is his first NFL touchdown. I'm sure at this point, Dan Reeves feels snake bit after driving all the way down the field and fumbling. He is in the second half. And what about Rich Goins in Denver? He sits atop a cold billboard. This is Charlie Jones, Bill Walsh, just over 14 and a half to go. DeBerg, the Cinderella season, it certainly is. 24-13 Kansas City. Ezor and Montgomery are deep. Mallory kicks off. And Ezor takes it at the 7. To the 20, the 25, cuts back at the 30. He's to the 40. He's going to be caught from behind, and he is by Todd McNeil. McNair had a, a good angle on Ezor, and he just took the proper angle to catch him from behind. Now, this is good running. This is just persistence is what it is. A lot of contact inside. Then the good cut. Now, look at the angle right in behind him, and that was the difference. 50 yards on the return by Blake Ezor, the rookie free agent from Michigan State. Denver goes to work at the Kansas City 43 with a lot of time remaining, 14-21 in the game. And Elway goes deep and it is incomplete. Vance Johnson, and again, Johnson looked as if he wanted to go to the inside. Elway was reading him and the defense to go to the outside. Bill Moss is playing a superb game. Now there's Thomas, but watch Moss right up inside. That is tough on John. John had to get rid of the ball long before he wanted to. Little contact trouble. Yeah, Sully knew where, where his contact lenses. And they, they've been bothering him a couple times that he's been kind of rearranging. And if you wear contact, oh, that's, if that doesn't work, they're very uncomfortable. This one is drilled to Mark Jackson. And Jackson has it at the 35-yard line. So it's going to be third down and still a couple to go. Excellent job by Mark. Third and two. Coming inside, well-designed pass play with, with Mark starting to the inside and then breaking back outside and, and catching the ball. That last play, I'll tell you, Daryl Hamilton did a beautiful job on Derek Thomas. He really did. He's learning. Might be a little late for this game. Third and two. I'd assume they'll go for it on fourth down, Charlie, if they don't make it. Inside handoff to Steve Sewell. And this is going to be close. Sewell's coming back off of IR. He was there for four weeks on injured reserve. He hurt his shoulder weightlifting. You know, that, that's an interesting subject, that weight training thing, because these guys start working with weights that really almost unmanageable to get as much strength as they can. And you see all kind of back problems develop in the training room. In this case, a dislocated shoulder trying to lift. Officially, it's the 32-yard line. It's between the 32 and the 33. And it's a first down for Denver as they convert on third down. Humphrey, the remaining back. Jackson, the motion man. And we had motion on the right side. They should call this playback. They will. 
Looked like Kay leaned back. Aha, but Kay is a tight end. He can lean back. That rule is tackle to tackle. You cannot make that move. So, you know, he would be illegal motion, but the play should go. Four starts, 88, offense, five yards, still first down. See, he's a tight end. I'm not, I don't agree with that call. You know, it was, it was, it was, a, it was a, a drill flag, but the play should have been allowed to go. He's right at the top of the screen. He's a tight end. He's leaning. He's trying to pick yep. up Martin. Yeah, because see, a tight end can lean. You, right. you know, that can readjust and all that, and that's not motion. Our Xerox 10-minute ticker updating the late score. Chicago in front, New Orleans in front. And here is Kansas City 24 and Denver 13. Elway slips out of a sack and completes the pass. Now, how we did that, now, I this, can't believe. That's magic. It is. It has to be. Mark Jackson on the receiving end. And these guys believe in him, so the receivers stay alert and come up with the plays they need. Some real protection problems on the part of Denver. And excellent pass rush by Kansas City. Gordon McCarter is the referee. And we're waiting for the definitive statement. Illegal contact. Number 59 defense. Five yard penalty. Automatic first down. That's on Percy Snow. What he's calling is five contact five yards past the line of scrimmage because you can chuck a man within five yards, but once the receiver gets past five yards, you can't do it. So they spot the ball at the 33-yard line. I think what they're saying is that uh, John Elway broke the pocket and started to run. Then everything's off. Everything is off. And it's going to be a first down. The screen right side to Sammy Winder. And Winder is down along the sideline. Winder, the old aging veteran they use in the passing situations. This guy's had a great career. But Bobby Humphrey has not developed as a pass receiver or pass protector. So they're still being almost forced to use Sammy Winder. Now it's a screen pass. And he gets everything he can out of it. It'll be second and five at the 27-yard line. Humphrey. And he's going to lose a yard. Dino Hackett, the leading tackler for the Chiefs, got it. Well, Lewis Cooper's in there. He did a fine job, too. The scouting report on Denver was split backs with each a back behind each tackle was run weak. Run the trap play weak, according to Aaron Cherry, and did they have it figured out? Now the next thing they do is fake that trap and throw the ball. So at some point, Elway's gonna fake that trap to the weak side and come up with a pass. Third down and six at the 28. Scrambles right. This is where he's the most dangerous. And he throws back to Sewell. And Sewell is to the 10. Hit at the 5 and down around the 2. And there's a Bronco hurt back at the 38-yard line. That Lanier, it is. I think it is. It's Usually when those big guys are down, it's a knee. This loss would really hurt, although the season hasn't gone that well. This is their one quality offensive lineman. It looks like he gets rattled. But now look at Elway. This is absolutely miraculous football. Miraculous. And to be, this is his best game of the year, I'm sure. Time out. We'll be back.
continues to develop. Elway still in it. He's had some miraculous plays. And Humphrey spins. He is into the end zone for the touchdown. Now, this isn't the script that uh, Kansas City was prepared for. Denver isn't caving in. They're coming back. And there was a fumble that stopped the drive. Now they go the length of the field with a drive. They do a beautiful job. That's the trap play we talked about. And Doug Wydell does a fine job of pulling and trapping for Humphrey. So De Denver's broken out of that self-destruct mode, at least for the time being. Something that's, they, that's killed them all year. Welcome back to Arrowhead Stadium. Wherever you go, people are coming up and asking for your autograph. That's as it should be. But uh, you had a request yesterday. I think that surprised you. Steve DeBerg brought out an old poster, 1980, <laughs> when he and I were going to bring the 49ers back. Of course, that's me with the gray hair on the left. But uh, I think I've aged. That's what 10 years of, of head coaching does. But this guy has become vintage. And this guy has become one of the great ones in football. And uh, thanks to him, the 49ers have done well. And... Uh, He's become a very, very good friend. Yeah, he didn't do too bad either. And here is Todd McNair on the return. And he is out to the 20-yard line. Anthony Thompson makes the tackle for Denver. And the score is Kansas City 24, Denver 20. That is the Cleveland-Houston score today. Houston big in the standings. In the AFC Central, they look like this. A three-way tie with Cincinnati, Houston, and Pittsburgh. And then on Sunday, Houston will be here at Arrowhead against Kansas City, Indianapolis against the Jets. Yeah, but Miami, Cincinnati playing so well, losing to the 49ers in overtime. They will be at the Raiders. The Raiders play tomorrow night. A flag is down. Barry Word is going to lose a yard on the play. Jim Lucas with the tackle. It's sure interesting to see how intense players perform, and then when something good happens or they see a shot at winning, they, they become aroused. And Denver right now is aroused. They, they just took away the blockers that time to get to the ball carrier. They're in their motion, number 87 offense. Finally declined, second down. That's an Alfredo Roberts. Now the ground game has to make the difference. They need four or five minutes off the clock, at least that much before they turn the ball back, or unless the person scores. 9.21, time remaining in the ball game. Kansas City leads by four, 24 to 20. Second and 11 at the 19. And here's Barry Word. He's going to get a yard of that back, and that's going to be it. It'll be third down and 10, as Carl Mecklenburg brought him down. Mecklenburg is uh, so tough when it comes to the one-on-one -on -one tackle. He's the guy that can make the clean tackle. He's strong enough and, and has enough girth that he stops people. There's a good shot right there. And remember what Dan Reeves told us yesterday, that when Mecklenburg was outside, he got frustrated when they ran away from him. Oh, and yeah. this way, when he's inside, you can't run away from him. No, that's right. He can get into the play, and he can use that the physical characteristics he has to his advantage. Complete to Rob Thomas is a first down. A key third down conversion, a gain of 60. Alton Montgomery with the tackle. Denver went to man-to-man -man coverage, blitzing Steve Atwater. So it boiled down to one-on-one. -on -one, and Montgomery just can't stay with it. He's trying to protect his inside. And Thomas is so quick, he broke out and made the play. But again, DeBerg just felt the blitz coming, held the ball, and threw a nice, soft, accurate ball to the outside. Warren 
Powers with the tackle. I don't think there's any surprises as far as Kansas City's offense is concerned, except somewhere in this drive you're going to get that play action fake and DeBerg's going to go deep. I would think so. I would think so. They're just setting it up. Of course, they're controlling the ball and using the clock, which is part of being a champion. That's Christian Okoye, shoulder injury. Light separation wrapped, you know, that's we're guessing may have some ice on it. Sure. There wasn't a hole there, so very worried trying to go over the top. He'll, he'll end up at the 41 yard line. Denver's giving it all they've got. When I say that, they are playing well. They're right playing, there. they're playing hard. They did last week. And if they don't watch out, they're going to win this game and some other games and lose a chance to draft. <laughs> One of those Colorado <laughs> linebackers. Canavis McGee or Alfred Williams would make a dramatic impact on this Denver team, and they're going to be drafted in the top three, the bottom three or four, first three or four players. And Bill Walsh giveth, and then he taketh away. <laughs> <laughs> Pass is complete to Stefan Page, first down. Twice in this drive. The Chiefs are converted at third down. It was third and ten, now third and five. Henderson with the tackle. The play calling is very, very good for, for Kansas City now. They're doing things they know will be there. They've run this before and it's worked. Joe Pendry does a very, very nice job as an yes. offensive coordinator, along with Al Sanders and, and many, uh, Howard Mudd, an excellent offensive line coach. I'm sure supported in his coaching by Mike Webster. Stephon Page, three receptions, 76 yards and a touchdown. Page is the motion man. There's the play pass. The word out of the backfield. And the defensive coverage this time by Steve Atwater. Just as if, was he mirroring word, just staying with him wherever he went? Well, he had a good angle and, and uh, he, he knew word didn't have anywhere to go but the sideline when he caught the ball. There's Joe Pendry, who quietly does a, a very, very solid job. And I think what Kansas City has utilized their personnel as well or better than anybody in football. Guys become top performers that previously uh, had been journeymen. Second and 11. 4.47 and counting, time remaining in the game. Kansas City leading by four. Flag is down. Word just plows through, but there was a marker. Mecklenburg with the tackle. If this penalty is on Denver, just look for Kansas City to control the ball the rest of the game. It was second and 11. They went to the 43. They'll move back and take the penalty. Okay. Offside, number 91 defense lined up in the neutral zone. Mm -hmm. Five what a way to go. Second oh. down. And our 10 minute ticker Washington by one in the fourth over the Bears, and New Orleans by four in the fourth over the Rams. And here is Kansas City by four over Denver with 439 to go. Again, very word. Tim Lucas this time stops him. Tim Lucas, number 59. He got a quarterback sack. Basically, he plays a lot on special teams, and Simon Fletcher was telling us that we say that he has the highest sack ratio per rush, rush. on the team. <laughs> he, they say he, when he comes in, things happen one way or the other. So he's been a good, solid replacement. He really has. This is the critical play for Denver. Very evident. But they, they need some time with, with the clock when they get the ball. If they don't stop it here, Kansas City is going to uh, take them down to almost too little time for Elway. In this drive, the Chiefs have converted third and ten, third and five. Again, it is third and five. Pass is 
complete to McNair. He's got the first down. Lilo Lang with the tackle. Third time in the drive. The third down conversion. What they do is create a lot of traffic at the line of scrimmage, and then McNair breaks into the flat, and Atwater, who normally covers him, won't be there. Now, McNair crosses the field. Atwater waits for him, and there's so much traffic on the other side of the field. The defenders aren't there. Well designed. And a guy like McNair, you, you, you talk about Word and McCoye and Jones, and this third down guy is uh, just what you need because he can make that five and eight-yard play. And Word, Word goes to the 31. He has three. It'll be second down and seven. Mecklenburg with the tackle, and the clock continues to move. Now they'll stop it. And Denver takes their first time out. We'll be back in just a moment. NBC Sports coverage of the National Football League is brought to you by Mazda Cars and Trucks. Mazda, it just feels right. By Budweiser, the king of beers. With that clean, crisp, cold taste, nothing beats a bud. By Levi's 505, 506, and 540 jeans. And by McDonald's. You know the one. It's McDonald's for food, folks, and fun. Two minutes and 47 seconds. Time remaining in the ballgame. Kansas City leading by four. Denver with two timeouts remaining. The Chiefs have three. Denver on their own 31-yard line defensively as Kansas City has the ball. Second and seven. Look at the time they've used up. Almost seven minutes on this current drive. 29 yard line. And now Denver will stop the clock again. And we will step away for a moment. And we'll be back to Arrowhead Stadium. 2.41 time remaining. Denver one timeout remaining. Again, as three times previous in this drive, Kansas City faces a third down. This time it is third and five. Count on a run here, Charlie. Really? Oh, definitely. Because they'll force Denver to take that third timeout. They don't want an incomplete pass. So count on a run, I would think, at this point in the game. Up by four, a successful field goal would put Kansas City up by seven if they do not figure the first down. Forcing Denver to go the length of the field. There's the run. And Denver stops it at the 27-yard line. And they do take, as you said, their last time out. And we'll be back again to Arrowhead Stadium. Fourth and three at the 27-yard line. And the Chiefs are going to go for it. Hmm. I thought they would go for the field goal, try to go up by seven, and force Denver to go the length of the field for the touchdown just for the tie. So it boils down, but they still, they lead by four. Seven doesn't help them any. But you're gambling overtime against a loss. I'm so surprised. it all boils, boils down to four to three the 27. I'd assume they'll make it, I guess, but I'm surprised they didn't kick. You can't assume anything. In football. Safety blitz. There it is. Complete first down. Touchdown. Breaking to the outside with everybody blitzing, safety blitzing, single coverage to the outside. And Thomas is so quick that he just made his man chase him. Kip Warrington cannot stay with Rob Thomas. Well done, and uh, I guess that's what it takes to win a championship. Marty Schottenheimer went for it. He put him away, and... Canavis McGee and Alfred Williams are that much closer to playing right near Boulder, Colorado. And the extra point is good.
you're going to see a out pattern right here and Corrington really unable to handle it. Meanwhile, people are going to be blitzing from the outside and the ball's gone before they ever get there. You see Atwater coming up inside. Uh, Steve DeBerge already gotten rid of the ball by the time he gets there. In a situation like that, uh, you have to close down the spacing of those blitzers. They've got to get there quicker because all DeBerg needed was a short completion. What a banner year for this guy. He's among the best in football. And it's like a, 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 like a journeyman heavyweight finally getting a shot at the title and, and getting it. And he took the Chiefs 80 yards, 13 plays, and in addition, he ran 7 minutes and 13 seconds off of the clock. And remember, that was 4th and 3 at the 27. Each time you see the Chiefs, they're a little bit better. Each time. Closing up all the little gaps, and they're fast, quickly becoming a championship football team. Alton Montgomery and Blake Ezor are the return men. Nick Lowry will kick off. During that drive, the Chiefs converted three third downs and that fourth down. check out the complete 10-minute ticker of all of the early games that we had today and then a check of the late games also let me tell you Charlie uh, I, I know it's, uh, it's, it's sort of in inbreeding or a conflict of interest but the San Francisco 49ers to have the kind of game they had against the Giants and win it, then to come into to Cincinnati who was inspired to beat them and beat them a few days later is a, a magnificent thing I just have to think the San Francisco team is right back where they were a year ago. The best in football. Elway fumbles the snap, picks it up, throws, it is complete. <laughs> Over the head of the first receiver, but Vance Johnson was downfield and he's got a first down. The ball at the 33-yard line, gain of 12, first down. And now the two-minute warning will be given. We'll be back in a moment. Two minutes to go here at Arrowhead. Coming up next, except on the West Coast, it's the Chipmunks rocking through the decade, followed by Saved by the Bell, and then it's Robert Redford and Sidney Pollack, the men in their movies. And Asner and Ray Sharkey star in Good Cops, Bad Cops. That's tonight, only on NBC. And that is Drew DeBerg. And, you know, Drew is not really happy until he sees his dad make a nice run. And, uh, <laughs> but, but, Steve. but Mommy is not that thrilled. Yeah. Also, the poster that we showed you earlier, that was to be autographed, but that was to be autographed for Amy. Yes. The daughter. Yes. First down at the 33. Elway throws, and it is intercepted. No, not intercepted. Lloyd Burris went for it. I thought he had it for a moment. It'll be second and ten. You can't, no one can tell me that good management and coaching can't make a difference even on an average football team because this Kansas City team had self-destructed and disappointed and, and frustrated people for so many years and Carl Peterson, Marty Schottenheimer put together a, a wonderful organization almost overnight, just two years. His second sack of the ball game, and the fourth of the game for the Chiefs. That was easy. That was that was a walk around that time. He was so quick with Hamilton, and he and he, he's untouched. He didn't even have to reach out for John. He just grabbed him, bear hugged him. cast on the center Grunheim and Elway is sacked again. That's number five for the Chiefs. 53 on the year and they lead the NFL. Sally Moe got this one. 
the difference. Here's Sally Amua acquired uh, since uh, Schottenheimer came to uh, the Chiefs. And here's an, another guy that's played this average to good athlete that's playing superb football. Bill Moss moving to, to another position. Excellent there. Neil Smith, all these guys are, are, are different players. It's a different state of mind. Six seconds on the clock. Here's the snap. Flags are down. Denver was not set. Going with the Hail Mary. And it is caught by a Denver player. I believe it's Advanced Johnson that got it, yes. But I'm sure that Denver was moving. They did not get set in time. And now tippers are flaring. There's pushing and shoving back at the 15-yard line. It looked like Neil Smith hit John a little late. He'd gotten rid of the ball, and Neil moved. And somebody has a fistful of, of Thomas's uh, face mask. Is that Marty that's out there in the middle of it? Don't ever go out without a helmet. And remember, it was fourth down and 22. Well, this is a long and recently bitter rivalry and for Kansas City to over finally overcome Denver. 31-20 Chiefs in front now with 51 seconds left in the game. I think it started all started with Smith teeing off on John Elway after he threw the ball. And Smith is down at the 15 yard line. He's yeah, down on his knee, but they're just talking about it. There's DeBerger. Really good motion. Offense. We have crucial foul. Unnecessary roughness. Number 59 on the defense. That is a disqualifying personal foul. When we have this situation, we penalize the major penalty. It's 15 and first down. Did he say 59? 59. That's Percy Snow. And did you notice when he, when, when McCarter, the referee, made that little move with his hand, is that he wanted, he wanted uh, Schottenheimer to get off the field of play, and he did. He just jumped back off. Look at Derek. He's got two of them. Snow's trying to, be, you know, it, I don't know. The flag may have been before this. See, that's the thing. The flag may have already been thrown, and now we're playing separation time. Derek, he got a little out of control. There's a lot of emotion you're in the, the game. You're the master of the understatement. <laughs> well, you know, there's a lot of emotion in the That's game, but even in this stage of the game, you can't let that happen. You got to, you know, you've got to methodically take people apart and just leave the field. Denver now still with the ball, have a first down at their own 35-yard line. 51 seconds remaining. That can be an eternity. And the pass is complete. That is Steve Sewell, a gain of 14. This is really, in a sense, a good test for the Kansas City defense for this kind of a situation. Ahead, a so-called prevent defense that functions well. Elway's pass is complete to Sammy Winder. Winder to the 40-yard line. And they're doing a fine job because there just isn't enough time to do any damage. Clock continues to move. It's a first down. And that'll stop it for a moment. Well, I wonder about that, that technique. He's throwing the ball away, but he doesn't even go through a throwing motion. It's like a, you could almost call that a fumble. He just th throws the ball down. And that wasn't the intent of, of, uh, of uh, stopping the clock, to be able to just throw it to the ground like that. Did you follow me on that? Yes, Charlie? I did. No, you're absolutely right. I mean, yeah. uh, no, because usually it's a definitive motion. You take it, you come up. And you know, <laughs> no, actually, I was thinking about here. Do they go with the three wide receivers like they did just a moment ago and try the Hail Mary again? I'm sure they I did. was just thinking of this play, and this is the same formation as they had a few moments ago. Now he buys it back, throws it back to the other side, and here goes Mike Jackson, and Jackson is out of bounds. But as he goes out of bounds, the game clock expires. And 
so the celebration continues here in Kansas City. And Rich Goins, the man on the billboard in Denver, and he's going to stay there until Denver has a victory. And uh, it's going to stay cold in Denver. So uh, he doesn't get to come down tonight. There's a couple of pretty good quarterbacks visiting with each other. Now that's one for seven for Marty. He got a victory and that, you know, each week, Kansas City sort of breaking a different precedent, beating different people. You know, two, two wins over the Raiders uh, each week. It's a, uh, another milestone in the season. And remember, Denver led at halftime 13 to 10. Yeah. And so now they have won only three of 11 games this year that they have led at halftime. Kansas City's record goes to nine and four. They are tied with the Raiders, but they have the matchup against them because they defeated them both times. And the Raiders play tomorrow night. So the Raiders need a victory. Uh, tomorrow night to uh, stay even, at least in the one loss column with Kansas City. You'd have to put Kansas City as one of the top two teams, I believe, in the AFC right now because they're a complete team. The Raiders have yet to fill out all the voids. There's certain things they don't do very well. But Kansas City's in all phases of the game, uh, they are doing very, very well. And so the final score, once again, is Kansas City 31, Denver 20, and we'll be back in just a moment. 